everybody, E here. Welcome back to another Top 5 Friday. And we're in front of the King shelves, so you know what that means. This one is Stephen King themed. Today we are doing a viewer request, which is my Top 5 Stephen King villains. And to follow it up, next week I'll be doing my Top 5 least favorite villains in the Stephen King universe. So jumping right into it, I have George Stark from The Dark Half. This character is my favorite part of the book. The way he dispatches, uh, his, not really his enemies, I guess, but his victims um, is the word I'm looking for. Especially the guy that, okay, there's going to be spoilers for at least the dark half. So if you want to click away now, go ahead and click away. Um, the way he cuts off dude's dick and balls and shut, leaves it in his mouth. I forget what it's called. Uh, there's an actual term for it. Let me know down there in the doobly-doo. Um, but wait, that that's just terrifies me. I'm a dude. I don't want my dangly bits cut off. And George Stark going to that extent for, what was it, the editor? I can't remember exactly who it was. Maybe it was the agent. Maybe it was the editor. I can't remember exactly who it was. But that alone puts George Stark at number five on this list. At number four, we have Mordred from The Dark Tower, The Dark Tower, <laughs> the seventh and final Dark Tower book. Um, if, of course, you don't count the wind through the keyhole, but that's book 4.5, so never mind. Um, Mordred, the, I, I, I hate, uh, let's just go ahead, again, spoilers. <laughs> uh, spoilers for any book that you see me hold up. Um, I will try to keep the spoiler until after I hold up the book. Um, so if you see a book you haven't read, please do click away. Um, anyways, so spoiler for The Dark Tower, the final book. Mordred is a gigantic humanoid spider. Fuck that noise. Um, I hate spiders, so that especially bothers me. Um, it is not on this list. If you know how it ends, that doesn't bother me for some odd reason. But Mordred really fucking bothers me. Um... There's just something about the, I guess, the humanoid aspect of it. Um, and also the way he hunts down, um, what was the guy's name uh, that's with uh, Roland there at the end? Let me know down there in the doobly-doo. You know I can't remember shit. Um, I want to keep on wanting to say Arthur, but maybe that's just because he was an artist. I don't know. Fuss at me down there. Okay, so at number three, and the whole reason I hate Kubrick's The Shining is Jack Torrance. Um, Jack Nicholson is fine, he's great, he's dandy, but Jack Nicholson was batshit crazy from the jump. Um, you don't get to see that descent into madness like you do in the book. Uh, there's absolutely no heart in that movie. It's all, it's all heartless art. It's very clinical, very clean, whatever. This book is a deeply disturbing um, character piece about a father who loves his wife and loves his son, but the addiction and the overlook, all of the atmosphere and everything, brings him to this this breaking point. And the way this one ends is all the more powerful for that, because we have stayed with them for that long. I don't even like calling Jack Torrance a villain, um, because he, he he's more like a tragedy. He's a tragedy. Um, but he... He is terrifying in certain scenes. So yeah, definitely Jack Torrance is at number three. Now the last two, um, the last two books, I might get some flack for. I don't, I don't know. There might be so, uh, many people who disagree. It may, maybe many people who agree with me. Um, who can't even see this list without these two on there. Um, but these two books, oddly enough, are not in my top five of Stephen King's stuff. And it didn't make this list. And I'm sure people were thinking that Pennywise would make this list. Pennywise doesn't make this list because Pennywise isn't why Stephen King's It is so amazing. It's the other characters and their relationships that make that book so great. And the history of Derry is what makes that book so great. Pennywise is kind of a secondary feature for me. So, at number two, we have a tie between Straker and Barlow from Salem's Lot. Uh, every time I read this book, uh, the, they, they really, really bother me. Um, there, there's one line that I will never forget. 
I've remembered it ever since. That uh, actually, it's probably not exactly the line, so I can't say that I'd never forget it. But it's something to the tune of "Darkness enveloped them" or him. Um, but uh, that there's something utterly chilling about the these two characters. One is way overpowered, and the other one is, of course, a uh, a vampire. Um, but the way King writes them as you know these. Especially, I always get them confused, so I apologize. apologize. Uh, Straker and Barlow, I can't remember which one's which, but the one who runs the antique shop, he bothers me more than the vampire does. Um, the, the vampire does creep me the fuck out, but the other guy, the I guess the Renfield of the party bothers me more than the Dracula of the party does. So yeah, it's a tie between Straker and Barlow. Last... And certainly not least, because it is at the number one spot, or she is at the number one spot, is Annie Wilkes from Misery. Being um, an author myself, you always have to worry about the fan that goes too far. Um, I am always worried that at some point in time, um, someone will come along that goes a little past the fandom into the fanatic. And this book is a nightmare for anybody in the creative arts period, where any any field where you have fans, you could even be sports teams to that, or even socialites, so celeb celebrity star, well, you know the whatever, like the Paris Hiltons and the Kim Kardashians of the world. You get those crazy ass fans, and who want to put your life at risk. It you know it's just one of those things where you either it's like what happened to Selena. I think is, is her name. I'm probably getting that right. But she was killed by the head of her fan club, I think. Um, if I'm wrong about that name, let me know down there in the doobly-doo. You know how we do. Um, but yeah, Annie Wilkes is my number one pick for favorite villain in the Stephen King universe. I could have probably added another five to this list, because I think Stephen King does truly iconic villains, um, and that's where I think the line between him and Dean Koontz is. I can't remember a single villain's name from Dean Koontz's entire catalog, and I've read all of them except for the most recent, uh, the, uh, not Ashley Bell series, the Jane Hawk series. Stephen King creates icons, whereas Dean Koontz creates plots. I, I, that's, that's the best way that I can put it. I can remember more about Dean Koontz's plots than I can about his characters. But with Stephen King, his characters shine for me. Uh, <laughs> shine. <laughs> Anyways, um, so definitely let me know which one of your picks for, uh, not which one, but let me know your top five, top ten, whatever, or just your favorite villain in the Stephen King universe. Leave all that down there in the doobly-doo. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you, this has been another Top 5 Friday. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!